Clothing shopping is the hardest thing on the planet. Oh my God, it fits. <laughs> I'm so happy. It totally works. Her breasts are bigger than her head. My name is Foxy and I am addicted to really, really big boobs. Some people think I'm either from California, that I could be from Vegas because I'm showy or flashy. But no, I am from Detroit, Michigan. She's from where I live. Are these the largest breasts that you've ever seen? <laughs> well, I'll give you a tip. These are not real. She has some type of implants. Let's find out exactly what they are because, whew, I'm a plastic surgeon. I have never seen somebody with a chest this big walk into my office and I live in Detroit. Most people know breast sizes by cup sizes or by alphabet. And I am now at 9,040 cc's each breast. She said 9,040 cc's for each breast? To put that into perspective, the largest breast implant that is made today is 800 cc's. That is less than one-tenth what she currently has. 9,000 cc's, I mean, we're talking, I mean, you're talking two liters of soda pop. That's like over four of them on each side. I do have the largest breast implants in America, and I have the second largest in the world. At this point, I am chasing the world record. I would love to be number one instead of number two. All right, so she's number two in the world. You gotta wonder who is number one in the world. Let's put that to our editors and let's see what they come up with. My first surgery was a breast augmentation. My initial breast size was probably about a C cup. The average breast implant size that I put into my practice is about 325 to 350 cc's. And in most patients, this can go from an A cup to a C cup. Today, I put in implants that were 450 cc's, although she was 550 cc's before, and this morning I downsized her down to 450 cc's. It's extremely rare for me to go anything larger than about 550 to 600, because once you get up to those big sizes, the breasts get heavy, they pull, they droop, and they're just really uncomfortable for a lot of women. She had back problems, ma'am. I had my first two boob jobs, an hourglass tummy tuck, a third breast augmentation, three Brazilian butt lifts. Okay, so this is a lot of surgery. Now, why would you have so many breast implant operations? Well, you can't go from being a A cup or a B cup to the size that Foxy is in one operation. It takes many operations to gradually stretch that tissue larger and larger so that you can put in bigger sizes. Occasionally I get patients who ask me for a size that I literally cannot fit into them. I'll tell them, look, I cannot put this into you in one operation. And the way I describe it, it's like you take a mitten that is a small size and you try to stuff an extra large size hand into it. It just won't fit in, and in some cases, that's the way a breast is with a large implant. You just cannot stuff it in to certain breasts. That being said, skin stretches, our tissue stretches, and eventually you can get that large hand into that mitten because gradually that mitten will stretch out with time. My cheeks were fat transferred too. My lips done twice. Breast augmentation, number four. So we've talked a lot about her breasts, but we haven't mentioned all the other stuff that she's had done. She's had her lips done, and you can really tell that she's probably had a combination of fat as well as filler into her lips. And she's had, did she say three Brazilian butt lifts? This is where you take fat from one part of the body, you liposuction it, purify that fat, and then inject it into the butt. That's a lot of fat that she has in her butt. You gotta wonder where did they get all of this fat from? I had my lips done, so that was the third time for my lips. And I got lipo, butt implants. She had three BBLs and butt implants. Usually you'd go with one BBL, but to put in implants with the BBL, I actually never heard of this. 
Now, buttock implant surgery is not all that common. It's kind of a niche procedure that's not done by a lot of plastic surgeons. And I'm not a fan of buttock implants because that area is just not the cleanest part of the body. There is a risk of infection. There's a risk that that implant can move out of place. There have even been videos that have gone viral of people moving their buttock implants around because those implants don't necessarily always stay in the same place. And the last thing you want is your buttock implant sitting in your lower back. And 3D ab etching. What is 3D ab etching? Well, ab etching is basically liposuctioning around the muscles of the abdomen to make it look like you have a six pack. So essentially what you're doing is you are liposuctioning along the areas that you want it to look like you have indentations and that can make the fat that is left behind look like you've got chiseled muscle. But it's not muscle, it's fat. <laughs> it just kind of looks like that. Now 3D ab etching is just probably some doctor saying it's 3D and trying to make it sound fancier than just regular ab etching, but essentially it's the same thing. I did a facelift, a neck lift, a brow lift, and a nose job. That's a lot of facial plastic surgery. I will tell you though, the good thing is, is she doesn't look, other than her large lips, she doesn't look like she has a really plastic face. So her plastic surgeon doing her facial work, I think was relatively conservative with those procedures, as many of them there were. Got thinning hair? Don't get hair transplants just yet. Try these natural options first. Step one is to take a thinning hair supplement like Nutrafol. Step two is to use a low light laser helmet like the iRestore. Step three is to condition your hair with a conditioner that contains rosemary oil. And step four is to derma roll or stamp your scalp and then apply either minoxidil or topical rosemary oil. Do this and you should see thicker hair within four to six months. Always autojuvenate before you operate. More in my new book, Younger for Life. Go to autojuvenation.com or click the link in the caption below to get it. And if you pre-order it before it goes on sale, you will receive over $100 worth of free gifts. On my fourth augmentation, I had expanders put in. I have the ability to add saline to my breasts and make them bigger whenever I want. So she has tissue expanders in each breast. And basically these are used as temporary implants to cause tissue to stretch out. We'll often use tissue expanders when we perform breast reconstruction after mastectomy. Because sometimes there really is not a lot of tissue there after a mastectomy and we use these expanders to expand a pocket for placement of an implant. Well she is using these essential reconstructive sizing implants as a way to basically give her the size she wants. The crazy part of all of this is she is doing it by herself. That is absolutely crazy. Right now there's a port on the side of my breast and it's inside under my skin. Each of these tissue expanders has a port where you can actually stick a needle into it to fill it up with saline solution. The challenge is, is finding that port because if you miss the port, then you can actually puncture the implant if the implant gets a hole in it, then it deflates. You gotta bring the needle down in a stabbing motion. Usually to find the port, we use magnets. There's a magnet inside the actual port of that implant sizer, and then you use another magnet on the surface of the skin to try to find it. So a gimbal, it's like a little magnetic piece, and it shows you, it directs exactly where that port is. So that port is right here. This is so out there because this is exactly what we do in our office when we fill these tissue expanders in patients who've had breast reconstruction. But the fact that she is doing this by herself at home just so she can have impossibly large breasts is beyond me. The other thing that I wonder is what size are these implants made to be? Now I once conducted an experiment in my office of a breast implant sizer and I filled it with several liters of saline and wondering at what point is the implant going to actually pop and break? And it never did. I never got to that point where it actually popped. At 9,000 cc's, that implant is getting stretched thinner and thinner and thinner. And like a water balloon that you overfill, at some point, it's got to explode. If I were to poke the needle and I miss the port completely, you could pop your boob. The other risk that you can have is you could get an infection. So you do need to have this procedure performed sterilely because if that implant gets infected, I mean, the implant is so large that her breast gets infected from that. 
It could be potential disaster. She could potentially die from that. While I'm injecting, I can literally look down and see my breast growing. And I like having the feeling of it growing. Well, that's kind of strange. Is there any body part of yours that you like to see grow? My ultimate goal is to reach 10,000 cc's. That's the maximum of these shells. The largest implant sizer here in the United States is about 800 cc's, and it is okay to overfill them by 100, maybe up to 200 cc's. So maybe you can get up to 1,000. She must have had custom tissue expanders made for her because if she's saying that the maximum limit is 10,000 cc's, I don't know of any implant that's anywhere close to that that you can use as a maximum limit. Unless it's just a number that she thought up in her head, because when you really think about it, what company is going to mass produce tissue expanders that are that huge? It just doesn't make any business sense to do that because there's only a handful of people around the country that would consider using them. <laughs> so, so we basically have in each breast almost five two liter Coke bottles. So now she is consulting with some plastic surgeons apparently to see if they can help her get the size that she wants. Now when you consider that her breast each has 9,000 cc's of fluid, guess how much that weighs? Each one weighs over 19 pounds. So you're looking at almost 40 pounds of weight just hanging from her breasts. The only thing that would get me to stop is if there was a health risk where my life was in jeopardy. So technically having these implants doesn't put her life in jeopardy, but having a complication from them definitely could. The main thing that I worry about is when she is sticking needles into her chest to try to expand her implants, is she gonna get an infection? Now in somebody who's much smaller, that can be really dangerous because she's got such huge breasts that there, there's no risk that she can, let's say, puncture her lung with this. But if you have somebody who's watching this and they're much smaller and they're trying to do the same thing, you could literally miss that tissue expander, that port, go into your chest and puncture your lung. And that could be very, very dangerous. Before the surgeries, when I actually was like everyone else, that's when I felt not normal. And this is the most normal I've felt because I'm myself. Well, in this situation, to each their own, I would never perform a surgery like this for her. And I would discourage anybody watching this video to consider a DIY breast augmentation. But if she is happy with her breasts, if she is happy with her appearance, then I guess that's all that matters. Now she may have the largest breasts in the United States and second largest in the world, but what about somebody who claims to have the largest penis in the world? I react to a video right up here of just that. His penis is 20 inches long. Yes, almost two feet long. You gotta check it out, you gotta see it to believe it. And remember, eat real food, use clean skincare, and auto-juvenate before you operate.